Well, Siege here, and today I want to talk a little bit about some of the information we get in the Leverian, and what implications that at least appears to have. There's definitely something going on here that isn't explained very well, contradicts itself, or might even lead us into a kind of little interesting mystery I haven't seen anyone else really talk about. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let me explain what I mean. When you visit the Leverian, you are greeted by Drusus Leverian, the curator of this quote-unquote museum of war frames and artifacts. He has a different account for each of the frames currently available to view, portraying the frames themselves as being the controlling agents and thus sentient, engaging in some type of activity that kind of shows off its main ability and is usually an interesting little story that obviously gives fans of that frame a little hype point, if you will. Problem is, based on what we know of the history of Warframes, they really shouldn't be doing any of this on their own. During the Sacrifice quest, we come to realize the Warframes are actually some of the Orkin's best soldiers, infected with a genetically created disease labeled Helminth, of which the apparatus for injecting it still resides on our ship in the infested room. Ordis himself tells us that this area is necessary to keep on board because it affects the biological processes of our Warframe, and based on information from said quest, Helminth literally acts with some form of sentience, able to communicate with both the Warframe and the Tenno. It's really not specified if this is an actual voice or one that uses a form of telepathy, but regardless, this Orican created spirit keeps a fairly docile existence and for some reason doesn't necessarily care for the Tenno, although that could be from some form of Orican programming because, curiously enough, Helminth and Ballas refer to them in the very same manner, considering them demons. What's really not known is if this moniker is given just to be derogatory or because it's an actual classification, but that, dear friends, is something to discuss in another video entirely. Now, here's the part that somewhat contradicts itself. If the Warframes themselves are not sentient, as every frame other than Umbra in our arsenal appear to be, requiring an operator to at least function in the intended manner without going feral, per se, how is it that these frames in the Leverian function with such purpose? There's no Tenno that seems to be associated with any of the stories within, and yet these Warframes seem to function in a manner more resembling their behavior after having been exposed to one. Are these frames sentient like Umbra? It seems kind of odd to glorify these frames with specific stories. My Ash can't do any of what is described in the Leverian without my Tenno. Same with my Nova, Atlas, Gauss, you name it. So what gives here? I can think of two possibilities that adequately answer the question. The first is that these are some type of progenitor frame, or the umbras of each of these warframes. Think about it. We all have our Excaliburs, our Lokis, Sarens, you name it. However, as I mentioned before, there had to have been one soldier that was the original version of these frames, right? Like the Orican that was subjected to the Helminth program, mutated into a specific form with certain abilities, was named and then put into mass production, right? Balas alludes to this beginning process at least in the mutation part during the sacrifice and as far as the world is concerned there are countless versions of each one of these frames basically insinuating that the warframes we have are clones of the originals now with that in mind as i can tell there's only one frame that we have the original of and that would be of umbra is this the reason why none of our other frames can move on their own because the Leverian, in my opinion at least brings this particular thing into question other than this one instance during the second dream, we never see another basic frame do this, and yet in the Leverian, it would appear to be a pretty common thing. So, as I see it, within each one of these Leverian entries, the frames appear to be acting in a way that resembles Umra, meaning that, as I mentioned, these are the original variants of each frame, the Umras of each of these frames, which could be one and the same, maybe even, and thus have some memory or tether that allows them to retain control of themselves, or there is a Tenno or multiple Tenno that are actually the ones controlling these Warframes. I mean, what other option is there? Did I miss something here? This is one of those times I could really use help from the community because from what I researched, I couldn't find an adequate answer to explain this. And let me also say that I'm not sure I'm considering things said during the dev stream as set in stone canon anymore. Mainly because I feel like it's a subjective thing when someone just blurts out something during a live environment. Not saying the thing isn't right, but if it's not backed up somewhere in an official capacity, there's no way to really know if after the stream was over, what that person said was actually agreed upon and made into reality. So do me a favor, please keep your responses to things that you can provide a source for, if you would. 
People sling a lot of shit these days. And no, I'm not insinuating any one person. Just saying. Anyway, the second portion of that potentiality definitely has me intrigued, though, because my thought would be there is a tenet of controlling them, and it's just that Drusus Laverian might not know that's even a thing. We didn't for the first however long, assuming originally the Warframe was the player character only to be shown during the second dream that this was not the case at all. If Drusus never saw a Tenno near the battle, he might not know they even exist. I think this mistaken distinction has actually been seen in game before too. During the first events of the game, Vor is highly interested in our Warframe instead of the child controlling it. The reason he makes certain to tag it with the Ascaris Negator, yet he calls that frame Tenno and acts as if capturing the Warframe will somehow capture the Tenno, something anyone who's ever sold a Warframe knows is entirely inaccurate. Even Teshin is caught off guard during the War Within quest when the Queen reveals she wanted the child, not the Warframe, something I always thought was kind of weird, like what exactly would she want with a Warframe? She's an Orican, they do continuity, she's in a rather ugly light model over here, I'm guessing the kid is the obvious pick, right? Seriously, how didn't he know that? Doesn't matter. If Drusus didn't know Tenno were in control of the Warframes, it's pretty obvious why he might think that each of these frames were acting of their own accord, and it would make sense if he just incorrectly associated their actions with those of the frames described in each of the stories. Which then begs the question, who are the Tenno associated with these deeds? Was it a different one for each? Or was it the same for some and not all? Or all be associated to one? And if so, who is this one the game is choosing to specifically document the actions of. For those of you that have followed the channel for a long time, you probably already know that my theory crafting is based primarily on the idea that stories, ideas, and overall lore are largely, not always mind you, but largely put into the world because they have specific significance. I mean, there's a whole universe of things that go on, if you will, but these concepts are the one put in front of the viewer's eye. Either they're used for overall world building, or they're trying to convey something to the audience. Other than that, there's no real purpose for lore, and because of this, most of it can be assumed to be in there for one of these two reasons. With that in mind, I think it's highly likely that at some point down the line, potentially when the Laverian is nearly complete, we might learn of a greater reason as to why we're being told these stories. And I don't think all of them being linked to a specific Tenno is that far of a stretch. Hey, guess what? I would like a quest around that. Can you believe it? Seriously, though, isn't that an easy idea for a quest? Come on, DE, hire me. I got lore ideas for days, son. Sorry. At the very least, something strange about how these Warframes in the Laverian act, or are being portrayed to act, if we're to believe what we learned during the sacrifice quest. And I want to know why Drusus Laverian decided to highlight these particular events. Like, you think these are awesome? You should see some of this shit I pull off during quests. It's way better than this stuff. Crazy stuff, you know? I'm talking scorched earth, motherfucker. You know, it's pretty pompous to name the museum after yourself, I have to admit. Well, unless, of course, he's the Tenno that control all these frames. It would kind of explain how he knows their stories so intimately and has all the artifacts, not to mention the Warframes, which are obviously real, because you can actually pull some stuff back from this area and put it into your orbiter as a decoration. Come to think of it, you know what the Laverian overall kind of resembles? My arsenal. You got frames in there, weapons, armor, Sindanas. I mean, the collection is rather small, I have to admit, but you don't think that Drusus is a Tenno, do you? Nah, it can't be. Well, nah. Well, nah. With that being said, what do you think is going on here? As I mentioned earlier, if you have some definitive proof that has been explained, I'd really like to see it because I can't say I understand this disconnect. Or maybe I'm looking at it from the wrong perspective. I don't know. But I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if that's the case. At any rate, I hope you all at least enjoyed the video today. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful rest of your week, and I'll talk at you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.